Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey 1. Good vibrations at your service to talk about a technique for shortening the physical length of an antenna while leaving its electrical length the same. It's known as inductive loading and I've just entitled this video antenna loading with coils so that it's a little easier for you to grasp at the outset. Imagine a half-wave dipole antenna. Suppose that we feed that thing with coaxial cable. I've looked, made something here that looks like open wire line, but let's just suppose that you feed that thing with 50 ohm cable to your transceiver, your ham radio transceiver. At this point right here, you would ideally want to place a ballon coil so that this balanced antenna works well with the unbalanced feed line. Now, on, say, 80 meters, the 80 meter amateur band, a half wavelength dipole measures roughly 130 to 140 feet from end to end. And you may find that you don't have that kind of physical space in your in your residential lot. You may want to try to shorten that antenna and tune it in some way. Well, the one way you can do that is to simply make it shorter, use an open wire line here, put a transmatch between that open wire and your radio, and you should be good to go. And that technique is used by a lot of people. There's another way to do that, though, and that is to shorten the radiator as you normally would do and then place coils right about in the center of each side of the dipole. Now you can move those coils either side of center uh, but a good place to put them as a rule of thumb as it were is roughly in the center. They should however both be the same distance from the feed point. You don't want to put one of them way out here and the other one way in here. You want them to be the same distance. Now as to what these actual values L are going to be, you're going to have to find that out by experiment. You can wind your own coils on plastic forms that you can get at a hardware store. Just little pipe couplers, those little uh, PVC pipe couplers. Drill a couple of holes in the ends of those things and wrap your coil on there. You might even wrap your wire, um, run your wire through the hole, wrap it around that thing, and then run it all the way through to the center, and then kind of trim your antenna length and everything until you get an electrical half wavelength, say on 3.5 megahertz. You might want to have your physical antenna length be, say, 100 feet. That's too short to operate without these inductive elements in there. So you wind coils and insert them in there and by experiment you find the point where you get the minimum standing wave ratio. Now I should mention a couple of things about that. First of all, your standing wave ratio will probably not be one to one you're probably going to end up with something uh, more on the order of 1.5 or even 2 to 1. It depends on how much you try to shorten this antenna. If you use 50 ohm coaxial cable in the ideal case in a full physical half wavelength antenna, you're going to find about a 1.5 to 1 SWR because that'll have a feed point impedance of 73 ohms. If you make this a little bit shorter though, maybe 100 to 110 feet, you might end up with an actual improvement in the standing wave ratio. It might even come very close to 1 to 1, but don't expect it to be exactly 1 to 1. The other thing that you're going to want to be aware of is that when you shorten an antenna like this, you're going to reduce the bandwidth over which you can expect a reasonable standing wave ratio with the thing. If it's a full size half wavelength, you might get a 2 to 1 or less from 3.5 to 3.7 megahertz. 
just as a ballpark idea. But if you shorten it to 100 feet, you might find that that is reduced to 3.5 to 3.65 or something like that. And the more you shorten it, the larger the value of the inductance you're going to need and the smaller the bandwidth is going to get. And once you reach that one-to-one -one standing wave ratio, if you shorten that antenna further, your best SWR will rise until finally it will exceed two to one for maybe, oh, say, 50 or 60 feet overall length. In that case, then you're going to need some other kind of tuning device between the line and the radio. Otherwise, your radio might not be very happy with that situation. But that's inductive loading. Now, you can do that also with a vertical antenna. And in fact, in mobile applications, that is commonly done. That is very, very commonly done. Because in a mobile application, you rarely want your antenna to be longer than 8 feet. So if you have an antenna that's only 8 feet high, that thing will naturally resonate around 28 megahertz. So you can feed it directly on that band. But if you want to, if you want to operate it, say on uh, 14 megahertz, you're going to need. Here's your vehicle. Big number eight. I have an eight foot whip on there, but I feed it differently. I um, I force feed it with a PAL star transmatch at the radio and accept the high SWR on the feed line and that does seem to work as well but you put a coil right about in the center there and you again have to figure out the value or the size of that coil by experimentation use the thickest wire you possibly can number 10 or even number 8 and make sure all your connections are really really excellent and you should have reasonably good results with antennas like that and you've probably seen them you know, uh, you, you can buy them commercially made, but why do that? Why buy an antenna when you can build your own? Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, saying 73 for now, and so long.